Remember those grades you got in school or college? Ask yourself, how accurately did they predict the success that you're currently experiencing? I'm sure you know of people who aced tests in school, yet still managed to fail in the real world. Or people who flunked out of college and became immensely successful. Two years ago, I found myself in a plane chatting with the woman next to me. She worked for a company that made flashcard apps for smartphones. I told her I'd recently attended a lecture by Reddy Roedinger, who found that if you study with flashcards, you only retain 35% after one week. After two weeks, you can't even measure retention reliably. <laughs> Memorizing facts with flashcards works for just a few days at most. It didn't seem to bother her. She looked me <laughs> right in the eyes. And she said, but we only guarantee that they will pass the test. I'd never thought about it that way. And suddenly I realized that it is the assessment that drives student study habits, not a desire to learn. Consequently, assessment, in a sense, is the silent killer of learning. And so, rather than fostering 21st century skills, our assessment practices are focused on ranking and classifying people. And, as I alluded to earlier, our ability to rank people reliably is extremely questionable. Why is that? One reason is that assessment rarely focuses on authentic problem solving. Real problems, at the top there, involve finding an unknown solution to accomplish a known or desired outcome. However, on assessment, students typically apply known and often memorized procedures to find an unknown answer. Even worse, recall factual information. Computers can do this. In the 1950s, Benjamin Bloom, education psychologist, came up with a taxonomy of thinking skills, ranging from lower order thinking skills at the bottom to higher order thinking skills at the top. Our assessments mostly hover around the bottom of this scale. And I predict that just as robots have replaced assembly line jobs, so will computers replace any job that requires memorized information or road procedures. So we should really focus on authentic problem solving skills and move higher up Bloom's taxonomy. Now, authentic problem solving involves embarking on dead ends, failing, trying again, and finally succeeding. Grades are incompatible with this approach. Mistakes cost points, and so students become risk averse. But taking a risk is a requirement for authentic problem solving. Let me switch gears here for a moment. This picture needs no words. You see right away what is going on here. And if this picture evokes pleasant memories, then I'd like to talk to you after the break. <laughs> what stands out in this picture? The picture with the explosive handling head. Huh. What else? What, what comes to mind when you see this? I'm after this word, isolation. Look at these people. They're cut off from each other and from any source of information. Have you ever encountered in your professional lives a situation where you've similarly been cut off from the real world? Then why, or why, do we assess our students that way? High stakes assessment promotes cramming, but cramming only stores information in short term memory. Consequently, there's very little retention or transfer. Einstein once said, education is what is left after all that is learned is forgotten. We only have our assessment to blame for that. Assessment also produces a bizarre conflict. Normally, we are the student's coach. But during the assessment, we make a Jekyll and Hyde transition from coach to judge. <laughs> this would be unacceptable outside education. We get away with this by hiding behind a thin veil of objectivity. But the only thinking skill that can be assessed truly objectively is the lowest order one. So it's this coach-judge conflict, in a sense, that renders our assessment inauthentic. And inauthentic assessment, in turn, blocks the way to authentic learning. 
why cut off our students from information? They will have access to information later on anyway. More importantly, we don't know what information they really will need in their future careers. Information should not be memorized because we think it might be good for them. Information sticks when you need it repeatedly. What then about access to the internet? Well, I can use the internet whenever and wherever I want, so why cut off my students from it? We should therefore allow our students to use the internet during assessment. Now, giving students access to Google during exam forces us actually to test higher up on Bloom's taxonomy. Of course, you need to make sure that the answers cannot be Googled. But I would argue that any question to which the answer can be Googled is not an authentic assessment question. These are just a few of the things that are wrong with our assessment practices and that we urgently need to improve on. Let me therefore end with a call to action. We must rethink our assessment practices because if we fail to do so, we will continue to educate the followers of yesterday rather than the leaders of tomorrow. And unless we focus on real problem solving, test results will not adequately reflect a person's ability to succeed in the real world. I invite you to visit my website and see how we can use assessment to encourage students to take ownership of their learning. Because only if we focus on assessment for and not just of learning, it will be impossible to make a real long-lasting impact on education. Thank you.